Hi folks, this is Steve from Emporium Customs. We're going to be showing you how to strip down this kind of wheel. Um, and this is going to help you with um, removing airbags, removing buttons, removing paddle shifters. And if you're converting to one of our flat bottoms, how to take everything off. Uh, and then obviously putting it back on again with the reverse of that. Um, we'll split it down into sections. We've already covered off how to take the airbag cover off on this, so we won't do it on this. Um, so this wheel can be found in Audi A1s, uh, AX's 2016, 2018, Audi A3 8Vs, uh, 2012, 16, Audi A4 B8s, 12 to 15, A5 8Ts, same sort of year, A6 C7s, same sort of years, and in the A7 G3 G5, um, again around the same sort of year. Um, quite distinguished um, flat bottom shape. The earlier ones had the sort of ellipsoid airbag, so this is um, the, the, the 8.5 uh, if it's a B8 kind of facelift model. Um, what I'm going to show you first is uh, a wheel off uh, demonstration of taking the airbag off. So when the wheel's on the car, it's actually really quite difficult to at times to get these off so hopefully this will kind of show you um, a more uh, unobstructed view because when it's on the car uh, you can't see any of this at all you've got to turn the wheel round um, on its side like that and then you've got to kind of I use my phone on um, like selfie mode put it on the dash there so I could see the back of it but this is going to show you the back so you can see exactly what's happening um, when you're doing that. So the bit that you have to release is these bits here. You can see that. And when it's on the car, it's ever so difficult because the gap is, is tiny. It's like that big. You can't see what you're doing. You're trying to do it back to front. It's an absolute nightmare. So if you just have a little look here, this is kind of what you want to be achieving. And that's moving that spring across and at the same time, pulling it towards you so that it drops it forward. It's ever so difficult if it's on the car. Hopefully you'll be able to see here kind of what you're trying to do. And you've got to do that both sides. It's even off the vehicle, it's difficult because it's pinning back. So you've got to pull it forward at the same time. And then it's the same on this side as well. You've got to move that across and then you got to be pulling it towards you. If it's never been off the car as well, you know, it can be an absolute nightmare. Um, and it's basically, you've got to get this spring clip the other side of this hooky bit there. And then pull it forwards. You haven't got as much room to maneuver when it's on the car. So kind of doing it like this, very difficult. Um, oftentimes as well, the screwdriver, let me try and show you, will get caught between the tab and the spring. So it will wedge itself in there and because there's not much room, it's really difficult to try and lever it off. So that's what you're trying to do. At the same time, trying to pull it forwards. Um, it's just a bit of a nightmare. So you can get kind of a grip underneath, pull it forward a little bit. You can kind of tell when it's shook forward because there'll be a bit of give like that there. And then what you've got to try and do, turn yourself into an octopus because when you try and flip it around and do the other side, nine times out of 10, it'll pop itself back in and you'll question your choices in life. Once it's off, we'll have a little look what it looks like from the side. So can you see now they're both clear of the tabs now however the slightest push forward will ping them straight back in because they're spring loaded and you've got to start all over again. Okay you heard that click that's the telltale click of that going straight back in. So pull the one side out as much as you can and pop the other side across. I tend to use a larger blade screwdriver and then push there and lever it, lever it. So obviously we've got the room to hook behind it here, but you don't on the car at all. You've got about this much room to maneuver. Get a larger blade, 
lever it across and then start applying pressure to pull the spring forward. This is what you're going to be left with and this is what you're trying to lever. So they've never been done before, they're ever so stiff, trying to lever that and pull the wheel forward. If the airbag's never been out before it can be very very difficult. So that's what you do to get the airbag off. Don't get stressed about it, don't worry about it, it is very very difficult to do sometimes. Just be methodical, take your time, you know what's going to be happening out of your sight now by watching this video, so you'll know what you're going to be looking for. With the airbag now off, you can see all the cables and everything you need to disconnect. This will be plugged into the slip ring on the steering wheel. Just use for a small flat blade on the back of it. Um, it will be pushed forward like all the way forward. So you just need to get a flat blade on the back on this green bit here. You've got just about enough room to, to hook it around and then slide it backwards. This is kind of spring loaded, so get flat blade and then just gently work it backwards and back out. And normally the same for this, just gently work it out, get something in between it, that and the connector. Just be very, very careful because these can become very brittle. So just be careful when you're doing it. With this model, in order to get the buttons and stuff off, the, the trim's got to come off. So it sits in the foam molded bit of the wheel. I don't know if you can see there, there's little teeth that sit in there. In the bottom here as well, little teeth that sit in there. So this has got a little bit of flex in it. It can become brittle over time. So do be careful with it, but equally, don't be too afraid to give it a little bit of welly because it will work loose eventually. So I always start near the top, finish at the bottom and then start at the bottom, finish at the top when I'm putting it back on again. So just do it methodically, slowly and carefully. You should be able to hear how much give you've got to go. Sometimes using a trim tool like this or this is quite handy. Another top tip, if you're going to be doing stuff like that, grow your nails for a bit. I don't normally have long nails, but if I'm doing trims and stuff, I'll let them grow out because sometimes it can be useful, particularly with trying to unclip wires and things like that. Um, slightly longer nails can help, so let them grow out for a little bit and it should help you out. So you want to be careful around the buttons. You want to be checking just to make sure nothing's snagged. That's your wiring that's coming across and coming through. You can pull that out of its little foam housing there. And you just want to be doing it methodically and carefully. You can pull it out of the foam there. Sometimes I'll push the foam back and just lift it with my fingers. Same for this. Now this sits down and in like that. So we want to start removing the top before we start taking out the bottom. So you can see that's starting to give there. And you see the, the gap opening up in there. So if you can't get your fingers in or your nails won't go in, just gently use trim tools just to get yourself a little bit of leverage in there. Don't be afraid to be forceful with it, but don't be mad and ham fisted because you are going to end up breaking it. It is tough, but it's not indestructible. Just be slow with it, be methodical eventually should give. When you start to pull it out just have a look and see if you can see where it's catching. Sometimes you've got to take bits out before you can get other bits out depending on what the model is. And then just slowly work your way. Once I've got this off I'll show you where all the uh, anchoring points are so you know for when you do it. Working this off can be a bit of a struggle. Um, you don't want to be kind of pulling from here too much because this has got a bit of flex. You don't want to be, it's quite weak there, so you don't want to be snapping it. Um, but it does require quite a bit of force. So, what I tend to do is just try and get it up as much away from the edge as possible. When you're trying to lever it, try and use plastic trim tools. This is getting re trimmed, so I'm not that bothered about the. Um, the leather it's not really that important if it gets damaged but if you're just changing paddles or something 
you don't really want to be damaging so we want to be leaving up along the edge and then what you've got which i'll try and get off it is difficult um don't worry too much about it if it's taking you a while it takes me a while as well you just got to try and get the edge up and then the securing lug is under here which i'll show you once we get it off um, it may be that the center trim where the buttons are pops out from the outer black one they just click together so if it does pop out don't worry about it um, you can just pop it back in afterwards but you've got to try and kind of work this loose up the side and get in because it's about here that you want to get the pressure on because that's where the stud is it's just awkward I'm trying to film it at the same time as well so you can kind of apply pressure and leverage from here and then just work your way along trying to get yourself in there and pop it up from underneath without damaging the wires as well just be mindful of them be careful of the wires because you've got your multifunction steering wheel control wires in there and your paddle shifter wires it is stiff but it will go once we go off if you can look here if you can see that there's like a little pin and then there's a, a recess in the foam and lift it up that's where it pops into and if it's never ever been off ever it's very tight so it's difficult to get out of there and you've just got to try and wipe the rest free everything else should be free and loose so it's just this bottom Oop. section there Super. and if you look that's got the same sort of pins and the same sort of recesses if you get these carbon fibred, um, sometimes you may find that this is stopping this going back on properly. When you put carbon on it, it's got uh, the bonding stuff, it's got the carbon weave sheet, and then it's got resin, and that will increase the overall um, space that it takes up. It is quite tight in there. So you may find that you just need to do a little bit of sanding around the edge until the original trim goes back in it's nothing to worry about just make sure you take off the visible bits so you don't um, go over on the sanding but just dig it out a little bit it'll only be part of a mill it won't be massive so that's the that free now um, and then I'll show you what we're looking at for the wires and how to take the paddle shifters off okay so removing the paddle shifters um, once the trims off just flip it over very gently and then you can see all the wiring plugs underneath so this is where growing your nails a little bit before you do this comes into hand because you've got tiny little push clips to pull out there just be ever so careful with these because they're really 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 delicate just lift that up for you so they will just push in and open up and for this side, push it in and release, and then you can remove the trim piece. And these are your wires for your paddle shifters. Sometimes I'll ask you what colour these wires are if you're having paddle replacements, depending on what model it is. Um, so that's how you can tell. You've got to get the trim off and have a little look and see what um, colour designations they've got on them. And so these are normally, let's have a look. Yeah, you're going to need worn off. Yeah, I think it's T25 or T20, but don't quote me. If you poke it in the hole and it fits, that's the right one. So always make sure before I start doing this that you've got somewhere to put all your bits and bobs <clears throat> because if you're like me, you'll start losing them have somewhere prior to start disassembling if you've got stuff um, so you've got somewhere to put it so you unscrew them take the bolt out put it somewhere safe what I normally do is once the paddles are off I'll stick it back in the paddle I'll show you from this side just being careful of the mechanism which is this and then carefully extract the cable out make sure 
the little clip on it doesn't get stuck. Don't force it. If it's not coming, check why it's not coming. Don't force it, okay? And then that's what your paddle shifter looks like. That's your shifter module. And if you're changing for um, some of our Aura shifters or something similar, um, you can remove these. There's a little rod that runs along there. Normally there's a hole top and bottom where you can push it out. On the B9s it certainly is, you can push it out from this side. This has only got the one in the top, so you'll have to get in there and push the rod up from the bottom to enable you to remove that. Take this off from the other side. And then I'll always put that back in there so it doesn't get lost it's with the shifter then. Two piece again, or whatever you might have. Pop it off, and I'll do it so you can see it from this side this time. Just gently pull down from the back side, so this side, pull down because if you watch, you can see how it hooks into the wheel itself. See that pop out, and then extract that out very, very carefully. And to put them back in, Hook that piece in. Make sure the cable goes in first, carefully. Don't ram it in, don't force it. Be careful because these are delicate. Pull that through so there's no slack. And then push that through after it. And pop your screw back through there. There you go. So now you've got a naked wheel and that's what it looks like with nothing on, no wiring or nothing. This is your bare frame, your bare core um, with everything removed. In order to take the modules off these shifters themselves, um, like I said with some of the later models there's one of these um, holes either side so you just use something thin to push it through. With these Depending on how far back they've been pushed to the factory, you have got to dig in there a little bit and leave the bolt out. So if it's pushed right back up, you've got to get the thinnest edge screwdriver, the smallest thinnest flat blade you've got, and then you want to push it past the rod to try and get in between the rod and uh, the housing there try and get behind it and leave it out so it's not going to go first time you have got to go do it little bit by little bit by little bit just be very very careful I I wouldn't recommend warming the plastic up first because it, it might make it a bit too soft um, maybe just in a little area here if you want to warm that up just to give yourself a little bit of leeway and then just work it in behind there and push the rod forward it's not going to go first time it is fiddly do be careful with this because it can be quite delicate and you just want to lever it forward and once it's out here um, you need to try and grab it out of there with some needle nose try and push it out from the back as much as you can I'm just going to get the pliers and I'll show you extracting it and you'll see it come out so you want to get the rod as far forward as possible so that you can no longer see it there. Um, if you've got like pick tools or something similar to push it as much as you can, what you want to do is get it far forward enough to get a little bit of purchase with some needle nose very, very delicately. Delicately, sorry, hang on to that and lever it forward. Gently, gently, gently extracting it. Gently. Because you don't want to be damaging this here. If you damage that uh, or shred it up or deform it in any way it's not going to go back into the housing properly so very very carefully extract that out of there make sure again you've got somewhere safe to put it so that's what it looks like when it comes out it's literally just a pin you see how it's bent over on that side the tiniest bit that's just from pushing it with a screwdriver. It will go back in because it's come out. 
put that somewhere safe and then you can remove your module, flip it this way up. You can get some little loose bits in here sometimes so just make sure nothing's escaping you as you do it. And uh, Make sure you're doing it somewhere where you're not going to lose it or it's not going to disappear down anywhere. Just be very, very careful when you're taking it all apart. So it's stuck on the edge there, you can see. I'm just going to take this off a little bit. And I'll just be where it's levered on. That's its uh, pivot point. And you can see the mechanisms under there. Let's have a little look inside. And you can see all the gubbins and stuff in there. So before you start pulling it back, just make sure you can see everything and nothing's loose in there. So I'll get this off and I'll show you what it looks like inside and what you need to do with the new paddles. So you can see through there when that's on, there's a little hook that attaches it to it. So just leave it up and then with a slightly larger flat blade, just leave it free. It's, um, you see that there? It's like a little fold over hook piece that hooks into this bit of plastic here. And when that goes back on it, we'll go in from that side. Um, so make sure that stuff's gonna start falling out. See this little white thing? That belongs in this hole here. In case that does fall out. And it's just like um, a little spacer, a little gap stopper there. And that's your shift module. Can you hear that click in? So that's what presses against the little button inside when you apply pressure when you shift in with the paddle. So this is a shift module, and that's what gets rehoused into our carbon fiber replacements. So they're complete replacement um, shifters, they're not stick-ons. Um, this, if you can see there, it's like a clear bit of plastic. Normally that indicates that the shifters are illuminated, so that will glow, and it works the same as like fiber optics. The light will pass through and then appear there. Uh, so that glows up. So normally if that's present or something similar to that in sort of a clear plastic, it means that they glow. You can't do that with a carbon fiber shifter, so you'll lose that function because they're solid. Um, and then your new shifters will have a cup on it. it looks something like this. Um, and that's where you'll rehouse the shifter model, module sorry, back into the cup on the carbon fiber puddle shifters. Sometimes we'll be able to cut these out and use the iron ones. Um, sometimes you get them scanned and 3D printed and they'll be integrated or they'll be stuck onto the, the paddle body. Um, and then to put them back on, it's just the reverse of taking them off, making sure that you're not losing your little rod. So have a look, see how they orientate. You see that little hook thing on the receiver there. Goes in first. You can push that down because it'll just click on. Like that. See that the little space is popping out, so just make sure that doesn't happen. Let's poke it in, it'll go. It will just push down like that if you want to, it won't break. Um, that goes back on, and then you can see the receiver hole for that. What I tend to do is I'll get this all ready and I'll hold it lengthways like that you've got to put a decent amount of pressure on it to get it back in start feeding it in to the hole make sure as you're doing it that you can see that it's coming all the way through apply a little bit of pressure on the top just be very careful because if you slip you might hurt yourself or you might damage these wires so just make sure you're pushing that down very very carefully until it pops out and is visible there and now that's Pretty secured again perfectly done and they're good to go another top tip particularly with BMWs but sometimes with the Audis when you're securing them back into the wheel if you do them too tight it stops the travel on them let me show you now and see if I can get it to do it so when those go back on just feed the cable through very carefully 
they are very delicate. And that'll pop through as well, if you can see that. Like that. Okay, let me see if I can show you what I mean. Have we lost the screw already? I think we have. Easily done. That's why you got to put them somewhere safe. So when you screw it back in, if you proper wind it up and do it too tight, oh, let's not do it on these. On some of the other ones, there's enough space for you to really over tighten it. And it stops and move in. Fortunately on this it didn't really make a difference but particularly on the BMW ones you do it too tight and the paddle just doesn't move it just sticks in place so you've got to slacken it off a tiny bit of a turn to enable better paddle movement and then just re-secure it like that put everything back on job done thanks for watching